All right, Shalom, Shalom. To Brother Malak coming back at you with this truth. First and foremost, want to give all praises and glory and honor to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Arakah Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who well. Peace and blessings and salutation to the whole for the elect. Bayaf, Dawada, Dawes of David. All right, so I got a good video for you, brothers. Uh, it's called, uh, I'm going to call it uh, Invade Your Zone. All right, that's going to be the name of it. Invade Your Zone. All right. Now, the reason why I inspired this, uh, while I was inspired to do this video, is, uh, is when you listen to the song um, Above the Clouds, um, you'll see what the second verse says, which I'm going to bring out right now that I'm going to go into the scriptures. Now, during the time of Yahweh Shai, when he was walking the earth, he was on the earth during the ancient Roman Empire. Now, who was in power at the time during the ancient Roman Empire. Let's go back. Let's show you. Let's go into here. Let's go into here. Let's go here. Now this man was in power during the time of the ancient Roman Empire and who worked underneath him was a man named Pontius Pilate. This man sent down the order to put Yahweh Shai to death. Tiberius Caesar Augustus, which was uh, the second Roman emperor, reigned from AD 14 to 37. This is doing this, that right there time period is doing the time of when Yahweh Shai was on, uh, was around. And when uh, around that time when Yahweh Shai was put to death. Okay. So this man was around who sent down the order to Pontius Pilate to put Yahweh Shai to death. Okay, so this is how we know that history sticks. This is how we know that Yahweh Shai uh, walked the earth and did exist. Okay, because history doesn't uh, doesn't fail you when you have information like this. All right, now to say that, I want to go here and I want to show you something while I'm doing this video. Now I got this from the song "Above the Clouds" by Gangstar. Now, uh, when you listen to this in its entirety and you hear certain things in it you'll understand you if you're in this truth and you're in this knowledge you'll understand what he's saying but you have to break it down the correct way now i'm gonna break it down for you the correct way okay since he didn't he didn't really he understood but he really didn't under, understand what he was really saying but i'm gonna put it to you to uh, i'm gonna put it for you so you can understand now this says invade your zone this verse right here says invade your zone Ruin like ancient like ancient Rome. Now, in Vegas Zone is talking about Yahweh Shai's return. All right, that's pretty much talking about Yahweh Shai's return. And how how I'm gonna prove that? Let's go to the book. Let's go to the book of uh let's go to the book of Acts, the first chapter. Acts the first chapter. All right, now Yahweh Shai, when he died, all right, he was in the belly of the belly of the earth for three days, but the Most High put his spirit back into his body to bring him back. Now, let's go down to here. Let's see if I can get it here. I think it's Acts, either Acts the first or second chapter. I think it might be the first chapter. Ah, oh, yeah, here it is. Yeah, it is the first chapter. Acts, the first chapter. And, uh... Let's start at... Let's start at verse 3. It says, To whom also showed... Now, nah, let's read. Let's read from the beginning. It says, The former testes... The former test... Uh, trustery... Have I made O Theolophus uh, of all that Yahweh Shai began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he through the Holy Spirit had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now the apostles are back here on the earth again today. Now we don't know who they are, but we know that they're back here again today. And this is what you call uh, the modern day Rome. 
Now, it's only fitting that Yahweh Shai comes back to the modern day Rome because he left, he died in ancient Rome. You see how you see how spiritual this is? He died in ancient Rome to only return back to modern day Rome to destroy it. You see? Right? To get his revenge. Okay? And to deliver the elect. Because he had... Because uh, when he came on the earth the first time, he was the remission of sins for the nation of Israel. He shed his blood on the cross for the remission of sins for the nation of Israel. Right? To bring us back to the Father... The heavenly father which is yahweh all right it says uh to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs passion means hardness endurance it says many uh, by uh many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of yahweh it says and being assembled together with them uh commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For true, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. When, when they there, uh, therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now they didn't understand that, that we had to go through this time that we're going through now in order for us to get the kingdom again in order for us to get the kingdom these are the things that we're living we're living this prophecy out literally okay it says and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father have put in his own power but ye shall receive power after after that the holy spirit has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in jerusalem and in all judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, we're in the uttermost part of the earth, which is uh, the Western Hemisphere, which is uh, what you call modern day Rome, Babylon. All right, Babylon, we call it Babylon because it's Babal, meaning confusion. This place is uh, a ball of confusion. All right, okay, it says, uh, it says, and when he had spoken these things, while they behold, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Right. That cloud is talking about a chariot. Now, remind you, listen to what I just said to you. This is a chariot that took him out of the sight of the disciples. Right. It says, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men. Those two men are talking about angels that stood next to him, stood next to the disciples. Two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing up to into heaven this same yahweh shai which is taken up from you into heaven shall some shall so come in like matter as ye have seen him go into heaven so what basically the angel just said well you're going to see him come back again the same way that he left he's coming back in a chariot and we're coming with him see now when i read to you that invade your zone listen right here invade your zone ruin like ancient rome invade your zone ruin like ancient rome now like i just told you today we live in, in modern day rome so yahweh shai is coming back to claim the throne which was given to which was given to him by the heavenly father to re to reclaim what is rightfully his all right you see to reclaim what is rightfully his which we which we he gets we get according to romans the eighth chapter all right so then let's read this next part it says i span the universe and return to earth to claim my throne now see i just explained that i return to earth to claim my throne now how now what did he just say and likewise the same way you'll see how shy right you're coming back so let's go here revelation one and seven revelation one and seven it says behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him even so are monitored to walk so everybody's going to see yahweh shy okay his return now let's go here real quick we we'll go to is it i think it's matthew 
I think it's Matthew. Put this in right here. Let's put this in. We'll see if this comes. Alright, here it is right here. I think this is it right here. Matthew 16 and 27. It says, For the Son of Man shall come in, come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Right? See? Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. Right? The angels is coming with Yahweh Shai. The whole host, the whole army is coming with Yahweh Shai when he's coming to invade this place. Alright? That's, that's why this part says what it says. Let's go back up to the top of the verse, and it says this right here. It says, it has come to my attention that a mysterious force is loose somewhere in outer space. Now, those, now what these devils are talking about, a mysterious force, is talking about the angels and Yahweh Shai and the, and the Heavenly Father. Now, see? But they're talking about the angels here because those vehicles, those chariots that the angels ride in, is what they call aliens right what they call aliens but the word alien just means strangers so they call them strangers okay because it's strange to them all right it says the mysterious are the the mysterious are the mysteries salakia of creation is there all right it says up in the sky up in the sky the moon and the planets are there and new hopes for knowledge and peace are there it says, and and therefore, as we set sail, we ask the Most High's blessing. Now, the Most High is not blessing these devils, because what they did is they went up there and put their space technology up in the heavens to try to be the Most High. All right. It says, on the most hazardous and dangerous and greatest adventures of what of which man has ever embarked. Okay. So now let's go back down here to that verse that I was saying. All right, so I read that sec. I read this second part of the verse, which it says, "I span the universe and return to Earth to claim my throne." So now let's go here. Which scripture I read to you, which is Matthew sixteen and twenty-seven. It says, "For the Son of Man shall come in His glory, of His Father, with His angels, and then He shall reward every man according to His work." So the Yahweh Shai said He's coming back with the angels, right? Okay, let me show you something. Let me see. All right, Matthew 24 and 30. It says this. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And those clouds of heaven is talking about chariots. Yahweh Shai is coming with the angels. The angels, alright? Okay? Here it is again, right here. Matthew 25 and 31. It says this, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he set upon the throne of his glory. <laughs> you see? Now, let's go to uh, uh, where did I want to get uh, there was another scripture that I wanted to get another scripture that I wanted to get uh, oh Revelation 19 Revelation uh, 19 Revelation 19 and I start at verse 12 actually no I start at verse 11 it says, and I saw heaven open and behold a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. Those white horses talking about a chariot and in righteousness and he doeth judge and in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire. It's talking about Yahweh Shai. Okay. Genesis 49, Revelation, the first chapter, all the way down to the, uh, you can start at the uh, 15th verse. 
It says, in his head were many crowns, right? Meaning he took down many, many uh, uh, kings. It says, right? And he had a name written that no man knew but himself. And he was clothed with a vasture dipped in blood. This is all symbolic. And his name is called the word of the Most High, the word of Yahweh. That's Yahweh Shai. And the armies which were in heaven, those are the angels, followed him upon white horses, clothed in lint, fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. That's the lasers coming out the chariots. That with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron. You can read that in uh, Psalms, the book of Psalms. And you can read it in Revelation as well. I think the second chapter, the third chapter. And he uh, treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty. And he haveth on his vesture and on, and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right? So there you go. So the angels are coming with them, right? Now let's go here. The angels are thousands, right? That's why the scripture says, let's go here. Let's go back to this song real quick. It says, uh, it says, I'm going to read this last verse of it. It says, the maker, the owner, plus the soul controller. Now, who's the soul controller? Yahweh, the heavenly father. All right. The maker, the owner, plus the soul controller. And these are things that Esau is trying to be, but he's not. That's why he said he built his stars above the heavens. But he can't be the most high. He's trying to control souls. He's trying to control people's thoughts with his RFID microchip. All right. His left hand wickedness. Okay. Now it says Ayatollah. Now Ayatollah, he means Yahweh. This is that that's what that means. Yahweh. This this is this is he said Ayatollah, but Ayatollah uh, uh, meaning La, meaning the highest. All right. Uh they would say Allah means the highest which means the most high but it's yahweh that's the real name of the heavenly father it says rest in the sky right because the most high is that's where his throne is all right his whole earth the whole earth is his is his all right it says the sky it says the clouds are my sofa right so that's that's what i wanted to read there but i tell you what i said is that the same way that yahweh shai left is the same way that he's coming back to the roman empire Okay, this is why the prophecies are stated and set up the way it's set up. Now, let's read you Revelation, the fifth chapter. And let's go down to the fifth. Let's go down to it. I'm going to read this verse real quick in the 11th, uh, the 11th verse. It says, and I behold, because see, this is the angels, right? Because he says legions. The Lord said he had legions of angels, right? It says, and I behold, because this is what's all coming. Legions of angels is coming with Yahweh Shai. Tons of angels is coming to battle. All right. It says, and I behold, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast, the beast and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. All right. So that's an innumerable number of angels. Okay. And here, let's go to Daniel, the 12th chapter, where Michael, the archangel, is coming with Yahweh Shai as well. These are some of the lead angels. All right, here it is right here. Daniel, the 12th chapter, in the first verse, it says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. Right, Jacob's trouble. The day of Jacob's trouble. You read that in uh, Isaiah 34. Uh, I think it's uh might be 34 and 7 i think it is uh it says and at that time shall michael stand up the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time and at that time thy people shall be delivered every one that should be found written in the book all right okay so Pretty much the angels is coming back with Yahweh Shai doing his return. So let's go here real quick. I'm reading all of these scriptures so you understand what I'm saying. You understand what I took out of that verse about when he said invade your zone, ruin, ruin ancient Rome. Because today is modern day Rome 
but it's with ancient customs of Rome mixed in with all the other uh, uh, kingdoms, uh, customs, and things of that nature mixed into this one big pot, which you call Babylon, America. All right, aka America. Okay, so let's go here uh, real quick. Where do I want to go? Uh, oh, Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. Isaiah, the 63rd chapter. And this says here, and then I'm going to go into the Apocrypha, and then I'll just end it right there. Uh, Isaiah 63rd, or 63, and says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basria? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, Yahweh Shai. Who it says, because his name means deliverer, savior, all right, deliverer, Yahweh Shai, all right, he is the deliverer. Now, Yahweh Shai is going to, uh, Yahweh is going to send Yahweh Shai back to deliver what? The elect of the nation of Israel. Two thirds of our people are going to be, uh, are going to have to be uh, destroyed here on this first go around, but ultimately come back in the kingdom according to Romans, Romans the 11th chapter and the 26th verse. It says, I, I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. But see, when Yahweh Shai comes, he's coming to take on Esau's army. Esau's going to want to take on uh, Yahweh Shai. That's why I read to you the first part of that, uh, the song where he says there's mysterious outer space forces, right? It says, I that speak in righteousness mighty to save, wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. This is all symbolic, all right, all allegory, okay? Because the, the Lord is going to be doing his thing. He's going to be killing man, millions of people. All right, and I'll read, that in, I'll read that in Isaiah 66, and then I'll get the last one in uh, um, the Apocrypha. I have tread in the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger. See, the Lord is the Lord is Yahweh Shai, the Lord Yahweh Shai is completely mad. He's been mad for two thousand years. He's pissed off. And trampled them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. Right? The year my redeemed has come and I looked and there was none to help and I wondered that there was none to uphold therefore my own arm meaning save my own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me it says and I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury and I will bring down their strength to the earth right see so he said he's going to bring down their strength to the earth Esau that's what that's what this is saying Esau is going to be totally done away with he's going to be um, what you call um, uh, done away with there's another word that I'm looking for obsolete alright obsolete you can say alright obliterated things of that nature okay alright eviscerated all right, things of that nature. Okay, the most Yahweh's going, Yahweh Shai is going to destroy this man. Okay, but they will be back in the kingdom as slaves unto the nation of Israel, and he will be the first slave master. All right, so now let's go get Isaiah the sixty-sixth chapter, in the fifteenth verse. Uh, let's start it with the 14th first matter of fact it says and when you shall see and when ye see this your heart shall rejoice and your bones and your bones and your bones shall flourish like an herb and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants and his indignation towards his enemies meaning righteous anger it says for behold the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire for by fire and by his sword will the lord plead with all flesh that word plead means judge mashapat all right and this and the slain of the lord shall be many 
right? And the slain of the Lord shall be many, you see? Now, let's go into the Apocrypha. We can get rid of this now. Let's go into the Apocrypha. And let's go into Second Ezra, the 13th chapter. 13th chapter and the first verse. All right, this is going to end it right here. It says, And it came to pass after seven days I dreamed a dream by night. This is Ezra. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea, and it moved all the waves thereof. Now, the Lord is coming from the east, the Shemayim, the waters. It's coming from the east. Okay? And I behold, and lo, that man waxed. That man is talking about Yahweh Shai, strong with the thousands of heaven. The thousands is talking about the angels. So Yahweh Shai is going to return to ancient Rome or, or modern day Rome, which holds the ancient customs of Rome. And a mixture of all the other uh, kingdoms that were before it mixed into this one big pot here, which is America. And he's going to return to the same things that were going on as ancient Rome. Same things you're going to see now. That's why he said in uh, Matthew, the 24th chapter, where he says the days should be the same days should be as a son of Noah or Noe, which it says, but it, it means Noah. That his name. That's Noah. It says, uh. Verse 3, it says, And I behold, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And I read to you about the thousands of heaven, which is the angels. All right. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it, when it feeleth the fire. And after this, I behold, and lo, there were gathered together a multitude of men. World War. This is going to be, they're all going to turn from fighting one another to try to fight Yahweh Shai. World War Three. Okay, in the midst of that. In the midst of that, missiles are going to be shot off and things of that nature. This place is going to be evaporated, man. Eviscerated. It says, uh, it says, a multitude of men out of the number from the four winds of heaven. All the armies. All, every army. That's why the Lord said in Isaiah, the 13th chapter, he said he must serve the host of the battle. And then when you go into the book of Joel or the book of, um, yeah, Joel will tell you that the armies are putting together their, uh, they turn their spears into uh, weapons and things of that nature. Okay. It says, and after this, I behold and lo, they gather together a multitude of men out of the number of the four winds of heaven to subdue that, to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And the sea is talking about Shemayim from the east, all right, from the waters, the heavens. It says, but I behold and lo, he had graved, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. It's a big chariot, and but there's going to be tons of angels in the sky with him. It's going to be crazy. That's why he speaks about in Revelation, I think the 12th chapter, where he speaks about the war that between Michael and, and heaven. That's talking about those where Esau is going to have out his stealth planes and things like that, going to try to fight the angels in the heavens and things of that nature. And they're going to, uh, they're going to lose badly because they, uh, the chariots are, are way more advanced. Okay. It says, it's, 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 it's like they show you in the movies. When they showed you in that movie, Independence Day, obviously Esau tried to show you that he's going to win, but that's a lie. All right. It says, but, uh, but behold, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew up upon it. But I would have seen uh, the region or place where out the hill was graven, and I could not, meaning it was a big, big chariot. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they that were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet dressed fight. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up a hand, his hand, nor his sword, nor held a sword, nor an instrument of war. But only as I saw, he sent out his mouth. The mouth is talking about from the middle of that chariot is going to be a laser beam that whoop, seeps down and just destroy him blast of fire and out of his lips a frame a flaming breath and out of his mouth and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempest all right i'm gonna read this one last verse and that'll do it it says and they were all mixed together the blast of fire the flaming breath and the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which prepared to fight and burned them up every one so that upon a, all upon a sudden of 
of an innumerable multitude. Nothing was to be perceived but only dust, smoke, or the smell of smoke. And when I saw this, I was afraid. See? There you go. So, hey, Yahawashai is coming back for war, man. All right. And he's going to return in a chariot the same way as he left, the same way he'll be coming back. All right. So, Shalom, brothers. And uh, all praises to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, double honors to the apostles and those of great millstone, who well, peace and blessings, and citation to the whole for the elect, the Bayas, Dawada, the house of David, Shalom, and the Baba Bowl.